Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to continue with the Adult Coloring for Beginners series. And I had gone in my Facebook group and I had asked what y'all wanted to see next in this series. And I wanted it to be geared very much towards beginners or what beginners would want to see. And one of the suggestions I have received that really stood out to, to me was to really get into the explanation of the difference between shading and shadowing and highlights. And I would assume that most colorists or beginner colorists want to be able to understand this because you need to be able to know where you want to apply each thing when coloring any object on the page. So we're going to get into that today and we're going to get into it very much in detail. Today we are working again in Nightfall by Maria Troll. This is the same book that we have been using throughout this entire adult coloring for beginners series that I've been doing. And we are going to do a different page today and I'll explain to you why we are going to start on a different page. But if you would like to continue seeing videos like this and you'd like to be a part of this series, please do make sure that you subscribe to my channel and also turn on your bell notifications so that you always get notified every time I post a video. Also, please do make sure that you give this video a thumbs up if it's helpful to you because it really does help out my channel a whole lot. And let's go ahead and get into the video. This is the page that I chose in Maria Troll's Nightfall. And we are going to color this watering can here because this is one of the most perfect objects I have found in this book to be able to color and at the same time be able to explain to you the differences in shadowing and shading and highlights. So we are going to go ahead and pick some colors and we are going to start coloring this watering can. So to make this easy to start, I've just chosen three colors. And so if you look at these, I've got my midtone, my highlight, and my darkest color, which will be used for shadowing. So I've got burnt ochre that I'm going to use for the shadowing, which would be the darkest areas. I have cream for my highlights, and I've got turmeric yellow for my kind of midtone color. Now I may end up bringing in other colors. I've got some other colors set off to the side. I don't know if I'm going to use them yet, but I want to start out with just these three colors to make it as easy as possible. So the first thing that you would need to do is you need to determine where you feel like your light source is coming from. If I look at this picture, I'm imagining that the light source is kind of coming from the top of the picture and coming down onto the objects. And then if you look at the picture more closely, you will see that there's a lot of little bugs in here. Of course, we have a lot of flowers surrounding the tin can. We have a little snail here on the tin can. And then we have our little Mr. Frog down here kind of looking like he is just relaxing and, and getting out of the sun and hiding from the heat. So if you look at little Mr. Frog down here, he is in a little alcove out of any kind of light. So that's why this picture is going to be the most perfect picture in the book to be able to show you and do this lesson and show you where the sources of light are coming from and how to apply your highlights and your shadows and your shading. Because this area here is going to be treated differently than the rest of the tin. So let's go ahead and start coloring and I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. So you first figure out where you're going to apply your highlights. And for me, if I'm imagining that the light source, which in this case would be the sun, is coming from the top and coming down onto the objects, I am going to assume that I have a stream of light coming down through. So this area within here is going to naturally be my lightest of colors. And so I'm just going to shade all of this in. And again, I'm using the cream. And I would imagine that there would be a little bit more light 
hitting these areas here because this is going to be closer to our light source coming from above. And over here I see a little bit more open areas and so I'm going to assume that there may be a little bit of light coming in over here. And you just kind of need to do this according to what you feel is right. There's no rules when you're doing this and you just need to kind of determine where you feel like you want it to look like your light source is being created and you just need to kind of create that with your colored pencils. So don't put too much thought into this. Just really think about it one time and kind of just determine where you want your light source to be and then just leave it be and start coloring because if you put too much thought into it and you kind of keep second guessing yourself, you are gonna just get frustrated and then that takes the whole fun out of coloring. And we're, when we're coloring, coloring should be fun a lot of us do this hobby because it is relaxing and we can kind of just sit back and enjoy it, but we also want to be creative at the same time. So now I'm going to come back in here with my turmeric yellow and I am going to go around some of these areas where I just laid my highlights. And it's pretty light so I can't see it all that well. but I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but I can see it here and you'll be able to see it on your coloring page. But this is my next lighter color. So I'm just kind of laying this in. And remember that your darkest color is going to be able to come back and go on top of this. So if you put this in an area where you don't want it, don't worry too much about it. because you're gonna come back and you're gonna go over it with your darkest of colors. So that is the other thing. We haven't really discussed a whole lot of layering and that is where we would go next in this is we would talk about layering because we are going to take our darker color and the darker color is actually going to be layered over this one. And I don't know if you know about this with colored pencils, but when you lay certain colors over one another, it actually changes the color. That is the very cool thing about colored pencils. And that's why if you don't have one color and it doesn't look exactly the way that you want it to look, you can place one color over another color and you could change the entire look of that color. Now, as I'm coming down here, I'm trying to make sure I'm in frame, but as I'm coming down here, I am just going to shade all of this in because I really don't see any kind of light coming down in here because I am so down here and so down close to where the ground would be. And then there is all of these leaves and everything laying to the front of the tin. And so all of these areas in here, you're not going to see many highlights in here. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this mid-tone all in this area up to in here because I know I placed a little bit of highlight up in this area. And like around here where this little snail is laying, it is going to be darker and that is because the um, snail is laying on top of the object. So as always, when you have one object laying on top of another, you always make sure that you make it look as though that object is laying on top of the other object. And to do that, you're going to use your shadowing color. So I'm making sure I get all of the areas except for where I want it to look like it's highlighted with this jasmine yellow. Now remember, this is just one layer. 
and colored pencils are meant to be layered and that is how you get more vibrancy out of your pencils. Okay, so I think we have enough of that color down. So I'm going to come back with my burnt ochre and I'm going to add a little bit of this in. And if I look at this picture, you can see here where some of the lines are actually drawn in for you. And that's where we kind of come away also from really de being dependent upon leaving the highlighted areas only where the light source are. Because if you look at some of these areas, we also have to add a little bit of definition to the actual tin jar and where these little areas are they may be like little cracks and crevices and whatever in the tin jar maybe an older tin jar and so we need to kind of make it look that way and by coloring in these areas or shading them in with our shadowing color we're also going to create depth and we're going to create a lot of dimension and kind of just give a little bit of character to this object so if I just come in here and I just, I mean, I'm just brushing and kind of drawing lines with this right now. And there's some dots down here, so I would imagine that would be darker. And what this is going to do is this just is going to add a little bit of dimension. And even though we've got our highlight color here, it's okay to still go up in there and make it look like there is dimension on the jar. And I may even grab another color and come back again over with an even darker color. And by doing that, it will add even more dimension. So I've got those areas. And then here where I've got these little dots, I just kind of want to add a little bit of character to our tin jar. And I don't know how many of you have this book, but it is a wonderful book. If you don't have it, I will have it linked down in the description below in case you're interested in getting this book, but I really love using this book when I use the Arteza, Arteza pencils because they just work so well in this book. Now, if you can see, I'm coming way down here and I'm kind of filling all of this in because this is going to be my darker area. And I still have my highlighted areas. I still haven't gone over any of those, but I am going to continue to add a little bit of character to my tin jar. I think it's coming together really nicely. And see how I'm just going right over my first layer of that darker yellow and I'm just kind of going over it with this brownish color and it changes the whole way that you perceive what you're looking at when you look at this uh, this tin watering can. And then I'm going to turn the book just a little bit because I need to make sure I get my shadows in here. When you do this, you just go very lightly, but you also want to make sure that you have a sharp lead.
And then here, where I've got this little leaf right here, let me zoom in a little bit more. Hopefully I'm not too close, but I'm close enough. But I am just kind of shading all in here. And I am most likely going to have to come back and get a darker color. Because I don't think this one is going to. This is just adding a lot of um, character to our tin watering can, but it's and it's also working really well mixed with that um, jasmine yellow color. But to really create the depth and see what it does to add shadows, you will need something that's quite darker. Because all in this area, we've got things that are kind of co covering and laying on top of our object. So we want to make sure that we don't have too many highlights laying in this area. Because there naturally wouldn't be any. Okay, so if you notice, I am doing this really slowly. I'm not rushing it, and I'm not trying to just... It's not a race when you're coloring. It's just um, really supposed to be a relaxing hobby, so you don't want to rush it. And then if you rush it and you place color someplace where you really didn't want it, then it kind of just brings on some frustration. And you feel like you messed up and you don't want to do that. Because, again, then it's not fun anymore. So just go slow and relax. And on the days when you're not watching one of my tutorials, just maybe have some music. When I'm coloring by myself and it's just my relaxing time, I'll have Spotify playing on my computer or I'll go on YouTube and I'll find one of these like coffee shop type videos that plays jazz music or something and it really helps me to color and just kind of get in a very relaxed mood and just kind of be by myself and that is what this is all about relaxing Okay, so let me turn it just a little bit, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to... I wouldn't imagine at the corner here that there would be a whole lot of light coming in. So in this area right here, especially where the snail is laying, here as well, it is going to be darker. Because remember, our light source is coming from the top, and it's coming down. So we only want our highlights where the light source is going to be. And then in the areas where it's going to be darkest, like you could see over here where we have a leaf here and we have a flower here. So all of this is actually, I would imagine, covering the tin watering jar. And so this is going to be very dark in here because also we have the snail laying on top of the jar. So we need to make it look like the, t the snail is actually laying on top of the jar. And by that, we're going to take, by doing that, um, or to do that, we're going to take a darker color and we're going to kind of shade around the snail to make him look like he is, com to make it look like he is actually closer to us. So this area right here, I'm just trying to get, get it a little bit more layered before I come back in with a darker color. And you could see the difference in the depth that it's creating. I mean, if I wanted to, and those of you that are beginners and are watching this, you could stick with just the three colors. And when I come back in and I add another color, you can just add another layer with your um, color that you're using. 
if it happens to be the same one and just go around the edges to make these things have a little bit more dimension and just use the color that you're using and that makes it a lot less complicated but if you want to stretch it just a little bit and you want to be a little bit more creative then you can bring in another color okay and I know y'all are probably noticing the handle of the watering tin I am not coloring I will come back and color that later I just figure coloring that too is going to make the video go too long okay so I have a really dark brown here and it is called cocoa brown and I think that I am going to come back and use that one for some of these shadowed areas And like here where I want to add a little bit more dimension. And see it adds so much more dimension because I'm kind of adding to the darker range of colors that I have already added down previously. And this, this color is really dark. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to Oh, this makes such a difference. And then you're going to come back with that other color and you're going to kind of go over this and that is what is going to pull it down so I'm just going to use my burnt ochre and I'm gonna pull this in so that way it doesn't look like it's just kind of one thick line I hope my camera's not shaking. I'm just trying not to shake it, but my leg is laying on the table and I think it might be causing the camera to shake, so I apologize if that's happening. And I'm just kind of trying to pull this down. I might go ahead and color the handle off camera for y'all or maybe I'll color the handle in and kind of speed the video up to music because I don't want this to take too long now I'm going to come back in with my turmeric yellow well this was turmeric yellow was I calling it jasmine yellow the jasmine yellow was my highlight color and I think this was kind of my middle color. And see, now that we're getting more layers down, it is really looking much better. And see, when I come back and I pull down with this turmeric yellow, it's kind of blending all the colors in together. So this is what I mean when I talk about layering. We have layered all these colors together and now they're just all coming together as one because the layers are mixing together. If you guys don't have these Arteza pencils, they are absolutely wonderful. They layer so well, they blend so well, there's some beautiful colors in this 120 set. As always, I'll have all of these linked in the description. 
or all, all of my links so that you can check these pencils out on the Arteza site. This is a really pretty yellow. So notice I'm not going into the more highlighted areas. And look at the difference. See what happens when you just continue to keep adding layers? And I brought this yellow back in and it's not even our lightest yellow but it just is adding so much to the picture like it's brightening up brightening it up and it's just such a beautiful color and this yellow kind of adds to our highlighted areas but it also works to kind of blend in these other colors and brighten them up and not so much make them so dark and intense And so when I'm coming in here, this is my second layer after I came in and added some of that brown and now I'm just coming in and I'm adding more to it to kind of intensify it and give it more vibrancy. And it's kind of just pulling everything together. But I haven't even come back over with my lightest of colors to bring this together even more. Okay, so I am going to get my darkest, my cocoa brown now, and again, this is my shadowing color. Actually both of these are my shadowing color but this cocoa brown because it's so much darker this color is going to add a lot of dimension and character to the object that you're coloring. So you're using this one to shadow but to create even more dimension and shadow even more I'm using an extra color here which is the cocoa brown. Let me zoom in a little bit more here for y'all because I want you to see how this just adds to it. And remember, this is where the dots were in that, um, you know, originally on the uh, on the tin. And notice how I'm using this to just kind of shadow in these areas to make it look as though the tin is behind these other objects. I'm trying to make sure I'm in frame. And then down in here, I would imagine that it would be much darker. because there is so much covering up the tin down here that there really is no way for light or too much light to get into these areas. And I'm just kind of pulling it through with my other color. Now see I've got to come in here and I've got to do the same thing all here around the snail and then around this flower make sure when you're doing this again that you've got a sharp nice lead on your pencil but look at the difference and this is why we would come back with an even darker color can y'all see what's happening? Look how it makes it look like that snail is just kind of popping off the page. 
and it really gives it the dimension that we're looking for to make it look like it is laying to the top. We're actually laying on top of the tin watering can. Okay, so you're going to have to come back with your next lightest color and you're going to have to pull that out a little bit because you don't want to leave rough edges because rough edges never look nice. You want everything blended beautifully together. And if you're coloring and you notice you've lost some of your lead, you need to go back and get your sharpener and sharpen your pencil again. Okay, so we need to come in here. And over here where this part is meeting this part, I want there to be plenty of dimension in here and then of course where this snail is as well look at the difference hopefully you could see this on camera but when I just kind of run this pencil over this area you can watch it create the depth here and make it look as though it is separate from this part like they're still attached but it's creating dimension on the one object but if I just do that y'all could see the difference and that's why it makes such a difference to know how to mix your colors and where to put your shading and your shadowing and if I come back with my lighter brown and I pull this through I'm going to do this just so that it doesn't so that it um, gets rid of that flat line. You don't want you don't ever want your objects looking flat. You want to consistently create dimension when you're coloring and just adding like these little details and stuff that I added in here in this top part makes all the difference in the world and then if I come down in here Okay, so I don't want to add too much of that in there, and this is what I wanted to show you earlier, right here where the frog is. He's kind of hiding out in there because he's trying to stay out of the light or stay out of the sun. So I would imagine underneath here, because it's underneath and he's kind of in a little hole, that all of this area here would be intensely dark. So we are going to try to show that in the picture I'm just trying to kind of pull it through where I added more of this earlier so that I could get ready to show you what we're gonna do in the areas where the frog is So let me go ahead and pull this down in here a little bit.
And then I'm going to come back with my yellow, my darker of the two yellows, not my main highlight color yet, and I'm just kind of going over some of this. And what I'm doing here is just kind of trying to mix the colors to make it look a little more artistic and natural. Okay, so let's come back down now to where the frog is. And we are going to start coloring in some of this frog. And I'm going to show you exactly how the shadowing is so important here. So we're going to come in here with our darkest color. And over here where all these little dots are that are already drawn in for us on the coloring page. we are going to come in and just kind of color over all of those. And I'm making sure that I get my darkest color all the way up to the top because that is what is going to really give us the dimension that we're looking for. And we are going to get darker. This is just our first layer. And you would imagine down here is like the ground or like the bottom of the tin. So closest to the frog, you want it the darkest. And then this line here. It's going to get lighter as we go in, I think, closer. I, I still want a little bit of highlighted areas, but it's not going to be anything like what is on the tin. It's just the highlighted areas are only going to be there to kind of show a variation in colors. And if you notice, again, I'm just doing it very slowly and I'm adding color a little bit at a time. I'm not rushing it. And at the top where this line is where you could see where my pencil is now that's where the areas are going to be darkest. And right here in this corner I would imagine that there would be the least amount of light coming through in here. And then I'm just going to go around the frog because I'm really going to want that frog to stand out when I come back and color him green. And I'm probably going to come back with another color now and kind of pull some of this out. I'm going to look at my swatch sheet and see what I have that would be closest to this but still give us some dimension but not make it as light as our jar. Always make sure you use your swatch sheet. This is why it's so important to have your colors all laid out on a swatch sheet. So I've got the cocoa brown and so if I look at my swatch sheet the cocoa brown is way down here and so we want to go just a little bit lighter but not too much and it looks like we're going to be at maybe hazelnut brown or we could do burnt umber or we could actually maybe do raw umber I'm going to try a little bit of raw umber. It looks like it would be a nice variation to be able to pull that down with. Let me zoom you back in. Okay, so I've got my raw umber and we're just going to kind of yes, that looks good. 
So I'm just kind of going over and I'm pulling it down into the other areas. And I'm leaving a little bit of space, a little bit of white space, because I don't want it all darkened out. Because if you use only one color and you leave it all darkened out, then you're not going to show any dimension in the area that you're coloring. And I want there to be a variance in colors. It's always very important to have a variance in colors. Even if I go through here and I go lighter, and then maybe I come back and I add my darker of the yellows that I was using, it's going to create quite a variation. See how I'm just kind of barely touching the paper and going over those areas? And then over here where I said it was going to be much darker, I'm just coming over there harder and I'm going over that area because I want that to be fairly dark. So I'm coming back over with my darkest color and I'm coming back and going over that again. And then I'm just gonna pull this out again a little bit more. And then again, barely touching the paper here in this area. And then down here, I'm coming over with the raw umber because I want there to be a color variation between here and here. So this area right here, I want to keep the darker colors, which was my cocoa brown. And I'm going to make sure that that is nice and dark. And then I'm going to come back over and I'm going to pull it out with my raw umber to give it that variation in color. You can get a good amount of layers down on this paper in these books with these um, Arteza pencils. They just work so well in these books. Now see how I have a variance in color between these two areas right here? And so they look like they still stand out from one another. Okay, so it already looks really dark. So I'm going to come back with my burnt ochre. And I am going to kind of pull all of this through. And the burnt ochre is this color that we were using in these areas. So it is not the lightest color, but it is the um, first original um darkest tone that we had started out with that you see a lot of over in this area but we're going to pull that down into here so that we are still kind of in the um we're kind of bringing the color from here down into here but this is still going to stay very dark And then, of course, I want it down here just to create some variation in colors. And you could see, see I'm still going through here and pulling through these colors. And I'm also still leaving a little bit of white space. 
And in those areas where the white space is, I'm kind of very lightly just going over those spaces. I'm hardly touching them, so I still have a little bit of white in there. Okay, so I'm back with my cocoa brown, and I had to sharpen it because, like I said earlier, you need to make sure your pencils are nice and sharp. And I am coming back in here, and I'm making sure that all of the edges are really pronounced. And this is probably going to be my last layer, and then I'm going to pull it through. But this makes a huge difference because there's still white space, and I want this little alcove area to just really stand out. And like I said earlier, I don't want to come down too low here because I want to make sure I do it here around the frog and I shade in a little bit more in this area to make sure that this is darker than this just to create that little bit of variation. You don't want ever where you've got two spaces that are being divided, you don't ever want those areas to be the same color. So now we're coming in here and we're just trying to get rid of a lot of the white space that we have left and finish this area off. And of course, I'm pulling out all those areas where I just laid my darker color. Okay, so maybe a little bit more of the burnt ochre and kind of pull it all through. And again, I'm staying out of those areas where I had a little bit of white. And I'll show you what I'm going to do there. But this is why your shading and your highlighting and your shadowing is so important. Even in this separate area where it's got a whole separate type of effect that you would have to try to create because if you saw before I was using my jasmine yellow to create the major highlights here which is even lighter but down here where it's darker I'm still going to have a highlight color and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go over all of this and add another layer and I am going to actually use the jasmine yellow to pull all of this through and I'm creating even more dimension here with this color. And then down here where I was showing you where I wanted to create the division between the two areas, I made sure I used the very darker color down here. Let me zoom in a little bit more. But I made sure that I used the darkest, darkest color down here that was laying on the ground to make so that I didn't create, so that there's still a separation between those two areas. So, and I'm going to come down here in the bottom and I'm going to pull all this through and I'm still using that color down here but I've got my darkest up here which was my cocoa brown and I want to make sure that stays nice and dark and then I even took this um, turmeric yellow and I pulled all this through with the turmeric yellow and see all the differences in colorings I have in here in this area even though it needs to look like it is much darker than the rest of the um, tin watering can but it still has the shadows and the highlights and my mid-tone color which is for my shading. I still used all three but I used all three in a much different way and now I'm just bringing them all together with my highlight color and I'm just kind of burnishing them out 
getting rid of the white of the paper. And so that area down there is done. And I think it turned out really nice. So I'm going to come back into the top. And I think as I have this um, watering tin just kind of come together, I am going to go ahead and put this on a speed coloring so you could kind of see it come to life now that you have an idea of exactly what I'm doing. And you'll be able to notice what I'm doing as I switch out colors. And I'll try to show you as I move along. So let's go ahead and speed this up right now. Okay, so now I've got all the colors laid exactly where I want them. I've added in my definition and my little artistic areas where I kind of want to just create a little bit more character on the uh, jar. And so I'm going to come in now and I'm going to do what we call burnishing. And I'm going to take my shadowing color, my highlight color, and my midtones, and I'm just going to bring them all together. And if you look at this, you can tell that I've not just put in straight highlights. Like I didn't leave one big, huge, solid area where I wanted a highlight. So I actually have three different colors that I want to include for my highlights. And I'm going to add a little bit of this jasmine yellow in here just to kind of pull out the turmeric yellow because the turmeric yellow is actually a very beautiful color, but I need to pull it out just a little bit to go ahead and come in and do my burnishing with the cream. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that now. I'm gonna take my jasmine yellow, which is a gorgeous yellow, and I'm just gonna go over these areas and try to pull some of this through. But if you watch what I'm doing, I'm not, the, er the areas where I've left the most amount of white, I'm going to stay out of those areas. And generally to burnish, you would kind of go in a circular motion. So we are going to do a little bit of this here. When you're burnishing your colors, you want to go kind of in the opposite direction as you did when you originally laid your colors down. 
So in this case, it would be a circular motion because that is what is going to work for me to kind of pull everything through. And I'm going to do the same thing up in this area. And I hope you could tell on the camera, but it is kind of just bringing everything together. And it is getting rid of all of the white space in the paper. And of course, the white space here, I'm going to leave it so that I could come back with an even lighter color, which would be the cream. So as you can see, if you make really good use of your highlight colors, your shadowing colors, and your shading colors, you can come out with something extremely beautiful that has a lot of dimension, a lot of character, And it just takes a little bit of practice. And you could always use my video and not just watch it one time, but kind of replay it a couple times until you get the idea of exactly what I'm doing. Now I'm coming back with the cream and this is where I'm gonna go over all of these. Look, let me pull this through so you can, or zoom you guys in so I could pull this through and show you exactly what this does but look at this so now I come back with this color and I go the opposite direction and it is just really pulling everything through I'm pretty close so hopefully I'm not too close and you guys can see exactly what burnishing does some of these areas after I turn the camera off, I'll probably go back over, but just for sake of, let me zoom you out just a little bit. I may be too close, but just the, for the sake of the length of the video, and I think you guys get exactly what I'm doing and understand it. I will complete this and then I'll share it with all of you in my Facebook group. after I've added all my little final touches. But it's come together very nicely and I love the way it turned out. And I hope that this video was helpful to y'all. And again, you can use this for not just this object. If you don't have this book, find some kind of jar or some kind of tin in another book and apply what I'm showing you to another picture. Just for the sake of the length of the video, I am going to stop it here. I'm going to complete it out all my little touches and then I'm gonna share it in my Facebook group. But I hope that this video was helpful to y'all and you got something out of it. I hope that you have this book and maybe you were able to follow along with me and kind of stop the video or pause the video and then play it again so that you could keep up and see what I'm doing while I'm doing it. As always, everything that you've seen me use in this video will be in the description box below with links. I also have a discount for the Arteza website if you'd like to purchase your own Arteza pencils or anything else from Arteza for that matter. And I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day and happy coloring. Bye.